Everybody wants to own a supercar. Now the question is, how do you get to buying a supercar? Well, it's easier than you think. I'm gonna go and embark on an ultimate challenge where I'm gonna flip bikes and cars and buy my dream supercar. Right, so I said to myself to find the right deal. So I went through the internet, found something interesting. Well, not just one, but two things. One of the owners was desperate enough to give me a deal I couldn't refuse. So I had two candidates for the bike challenge. One was a 2009 YZ250, while the other one was a 2012 250XC. The question is, which bike did I go for? Because both offered great profit potentials, but I needed to find the one that actually gave me the best deal, the one that gave me the most amount of profit, and also the one that would sell the fastest. So I had to do my homework. I pinned the two owners against each other to see who would give me the best price. And funny enough, the most expensive bike was the one that I went for. for the KTM. The reason why I went for this bike was a number of things. First of all, I had to do my homework. This is an enduro bike. I never really usually go for enduro bikes because I come from a background of freestyle motocross and motocross. So jumping and cornering was in my blood and rocks and mountains, not really that much. So I usually tend to stay away from these bikes, but I wanted a bit of a challenge. Here in South Africa is a massive enduro scene. We have one of the world's best terrains all around. The enduro scene is much bigger than the motocross scene. And if I want to get a bike and sell it fast, it would be an enduro bike. So I was on the phone with the owner and I asked him, so what's the condition on the bike? He says, you know what? Just the headlight needs a bit of work and the starter motor, but apart from that, it's in showroom condition. So let's start off with the main culprits, headlights. There's been some sort of impact damage and then the inside of the glass. You're not really supposed to put your finger in there, so that needs to be replaced. And also, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not really feeling that whole Luma headlamp situation. I don't know, that's like very 2008, I guess. So we're gonna swap that out for possibly a white one or a black one. These are dirt bikes, so they get thrown around, thrashed and crashed. So this one obviously has seen a little bit of damage here as we're going along. There's quite a bit of scuff marks throughout. So I'm gonna try and just smoothen all this out, get that all out. There's a method by using a blowtorch. So let's see if that will work. And the exhaust has, actually no, it's not in bad condition, bit of surface rust, but a little bit of a wire wheel can sort that out. A little thing I've spotted though, as you can see, there's a little bit of an oil leak. So that means that the actual seal the exhaust steel is completely burst, so I need to replace it, but that's quite cheap to sort out. Enduro bikes go through a lot of rocks, so clearly the foot pegs just perish. They just get smashed up and bashed, so I need to replace a new set. And to confirm my findings, this is what rocks do. They just destroy everything. This whole shift is buggered, so I definitely need to replace that. What I like to do is I'll take the carburetor apart, clean everything so the bike just runs smoothly so there's no bogging and peace of mind that the new owner can ride the bike happily and everything's running great. So this bike came from the coast uh, from a place called Durban. The owner didn't really tell me that but uh, you can easily tell it's from the coast from all the surface rust and the spokes and around the bike. You can even see here on the sprocket. Yeah, you can really see when, when most of the time the guys fell, everything's tarnished. So I might have to replace this panel but to save money, I think the best would be to scrape this all off, make it look nice and clean. And when I put that new sticker kit on, I don't have to worry and uh, you can see this bike hasn't been clean in a while. So when I got the bike, when I was pushing it, it was making this weird noise. And I was wondering, where the hell is this noise coming from? And then when I further investigated, I realized that the rear brake pad's completely stuffed and it's actually not really properly mounted. So as you can see, it just moves. So it creates that real bad noise. And man, look at all the surface rust. I've got so much sanding to do on this bike. Like I said, these enduro bikes just get beaten to hell. I mean, look at it. That whole bolt is completely screwed. So I will have to replace that. As you can guess, more loose parts. This is not the only loose part I've found. I can make like a whole song out of this bike with all the rattles and shakes. This radiator seems fine, but now if I turn over the handlebar and go to the other side, this one is so loose. See, so I have to sort that out. Enough talk. Let's get this bike built up. So 
So we finally got to the battery and this is the one part I was really interested in. So this is your negative terminal, it goes straight into your frame, and this is your positive terminal. You always tell by your black and red cables. So this is going through now, all seems fine until you start getting to this part over here. So right over here, the actual fuse is barely hanging on. This is exactly how I found it. Let's see if I can just get a little bit more of a zoom in there. It's barely hanging on into the sockets. I have disconnected cables here. So this must be for the starter, because the owner said the starter's not working. But this could be one of the telltale signs. And there's a couple of wires also just leading into it, but it's all completely rusted. So that usually means poor contact. So always make sure that your terminals and contact points are always clean. So this is all going to be wire brushed and made look brand new. And also with the bat or the battery, we need to make sure this is all fully charged up and give it the right service it needs it need. Service book 101, guys, you do not want to leave a filter looking like this. This filter is filthy. And if I touch onto it, there's barely any oil on this thing. So guys, how you clean these things is usually gonna throw in a bucket of petrol if you actually don't have any air filter cleaner. That's just a last resort, you can clean these things out. But I would rather suggest using the air filter cleaner, get this thing cleaned up, and just get it oiled up correctly with air filter oil with the right amount, and throw it back in. But this air filter is going one way and that's into the dustbin. General rule of thumb, the more you strip, the more you find out. So I found some more damage on the bike and uh, it's right to the radiator. But this is the fine side. You can see a little bit of impact damage over here. But on the other side, it's not looking so good. I think this must have been some rock damage or I'm not too sure how this happened. But this is the loose side and there's a broken bolt over there. That's highly annoying, but uh, it's not too bad to get rid of. Um, it's, it just takes a little bit of elbow grease to knock that thing out, not much of a big deal. But this is something interesting, so you may look at this and you think that's a total write-off, but actually not. You take those hair tweezers and you can actually pull these fins out and you can actually refurbish this quite nicely. So I'm going to make myself a good coffee and I'm going to sit on a table and just sort all of these guys out at a later stage. Oh, it's uh, 10 o'clock at night here at the workshop or at the garage, should I say. The bike is now, I would say, 60% completely stripped. But for now, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and support the channel. I'll be releasing a new video next week. Still a lot of work to get through. we we'll catch you on the next episode. Guys, thank you so much. Catch you there. Wait, guys, don't go just yet. Quick hot tip. Always use a plastic bag to cover up any exposed parts going into the motor or the carburetor. You don't want any dust going into there. You can do that with exhausts, carburetor inlets. If you're going to do a little top end, do the same. If you're not going to work on the bike for the evening or for the day or for the week, hopefully not for the year, you can get it done. Thanks again, guys. And don't forget to subscribe.